We've all heard the stories about Steely Dan really being meticulous for a guitarist, trying to find the perfect guitarist, perfect drummer. This is after their third album when they became Donald Fagan and Walter Becker with other musicians. By the time the album Asia came out, which is their crowning achievement to most people, that and Gaucho, they were really in the mode for studio musicians. There was one song in particular on Asia that stood out and still gets a lot of airplay. Some might call it their signature song, but with Steely Dan, that's arguable. There are so many great tunes. Peg. The man who gave us the guitar solo in Peg was Jay Graydon, a gentleman I interviewed quite a few years ago. Jeff Skunk Baxter, who he himself gave Steely Dan some great solos, talks about Jay Graydon on Rock History Music. Uh, can, you, uh, can you describe Jay Graydon? I know, I know you and Jay go back a long way. I'm curious, eh? <laughs> How would you describe Jay Graydon? Um, Such nice conversations with Jay on the internet a few years ago. It was just a joy. Paul, when I worked with Paul Pina, who was blind, and somebody asked Paul to describe me, he said he's a match head. What's that mean? A lighted match. Oh. And I took that as a compliment. And I'd say the same for Jay. Bubbling with energy, innovative, way too much fun to hang with, um, gutsy. I mean, we've done some really crazy stuff together. And I have a tremendous amount of love for him because, again, no matter what anything devolved into, consummate profession. I've uh, I asked uh, Bernie Ledden uh, before. I said, did, "What did you think of Hotel California?" Because he was, of course, not in the band at that point. Well, what did you think of Asia, for instance? Did did and how long did it take you to hear Asia? Oh, uh, pretty were you quickly. Curious? Sure. I mean, these guys were friends of mine, and I had a lot of respect for them as musicians. I'm going to be interested sometime to see what Donald Fagan thinks about my whacked out version of "Do It Again." I love that. There's or Miles no Cole. He doesn't like that. <clears throat> well, I don't know. I haven't talked to him in a while. So. Was there a different vibe between those first three Steely Dan albums? Well, like in going, you know, the, the old cliche is you have your old life to do your first album. And then the second one, you're, it's hurried. I don't know if that was the case with Steely Dan, but was well, there a different vibe at all with, with the three albums? Well, the first three albums were a band. And then it became more of, a, a a iteration of a songwriting vision from Walter Becker and Donald Fagan. So yeah, I would say there was a different vibe. There, there's a feel with the first three albums. A, there's something about when a band coalesces and all gets in phase. There's something special about that. Not to put down studio missions. I'm one. And I have no problem going in. And if you get to play with guys over and over again, like in L.A., we sort of had this group of people that always played together. There is a band feel to it, but there's nothing like what a band can do. There is a thing that Mark Farner told me about this scale, this harmonic scale. It's called solfeggio. Do you know anything about that? The frequency scale? Yes. Yes. Um, there are a number of different kinds of scales. In the Western in Western music, it's pretty much a 13-note scale, and it can be interpreted in different ways. Uh Lydian, Mixolydian, Doric. There are all different ways to play a 13-note scale <clears throat> but that's in the western world if you're in the eastern world with people that play sitar for instance they're quarter tones western music is separated into half tones these guys are now nah, way more tones and the relationships between all of this gets you to some very interesting places harmonically I mean, I try to explain to people, I say, you know, what the hell? 
why you do all this work with the Defense Department? How do you know any of this stuff? Well, a radar is just an electric guitar on steroids. And if you understand the physics, it's all the same. Do you realize that if you play, uh, if you strike an A440, you know, the, the A note below middle C on a guitar, it vibrates at 440 times a second. And if you, you know, you play the harmonic, that's 880 times a second, and so on and so forth. Do you know what happens when you multiply A440 times 10 to the 23rd power? What the super harmonic of that is? The color green. So all of this is related. Everything is related on the frequency scale. It's just that your sensor package as a human being is only calibrated to get certain parts of the frequency scale. The, the, the feel of the low end, you can hear from 20 to 20,000 cycles. You can feel the infrared just before you get into the frequencies where you, your eyes begin to sense. But it's all connected. And then all the interactions between all of that create, well, they create the palette the, of, of, of everything. There's information on Jeff Skunk Baxter's brand new album, his first solo album of all time. Sure took him a lot of years. He's thinking of doing another one now, by the way, right in the description of this video. Remember, if you want to make a donation to the channel, there are links at the very top to PayPal. You can join our Patreon, get early access to all our videos from all of our channels. But really, like our videos, subscribe to our channel, share them on social media, and comment on them. I'm John Bowden. This is Rock History Music. Take good care of yourself. Mm -hmm.